Hi guys, DevilTorxYZ, and we're back with more Demon Gaze 2. And mostly just finish up the quote-unquote tutorial of this game. I mean, it really wasn't a tutorial per se, but it kind of acted like it. Uh, so... I guess another new day, a new fresh start to the day. Got... Uh, yeah, so I'm not really sure exactly what's going on at this point, considering the main character now has amnesia, probably, something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Let's see, you got the manager's room, you got Prim's room. Uh, you got my room. You got the second floor, which mostly is going to house my teammates. <laughs> But we'll get into that later. Alright, so had to go to the first floor because reasons. <laughs> Rent tables line the spacious hall. Behind the counter is a kitchen. Looks like <laughs> looks like this is a tavern. Oh sir, over here. Hey. Well, do you remember anything? Of course not. <laughs> uh, not really. I see. Uh, this is the tavern, obviously. It's a vital source of income that supports Stella's place. Tomo leans in and lowers his voice. Which means it's a source of income for the Revolutionist Party too. But we can't talk about that sort of thing out in the open. The residents of Stella's place come down here to eat as well. Let me know if there's anything that you'll like you really like me to cook. Oh, also. If you would please direct your attention over there. Then what points at a raised area against one side of the room? That right there is the stage. Stage? This place was once a theater. It used to be bustling with people when traveling performers would visit. But when Muse was still young, they shut down the theater. Only the name Stella's Place remains from that time. Anyway, that's why the stage is no longer being used. Hmm. Is that... Hmm? Gary! Who's Gary? Um, so this is Gary. He's a regular at Stella's place. Crazy night, huh? I can't believe you got kidnapped. I was listening to the radio, worried sick the whole time. I'm so glad to hear that you tuned in. All of us regulars here fully support your call for revolution. We're ready and willing to fight for the cause. Anyway, glad you're all right, kid. Hmm? Is something the matter? Well, it's just that. He has some kind of incredible power now, right? Maybe it's rude to say, kid. I believe he's called a demon gazer. Oh. Maybe I'll call him boss. Well, see you around. Gary raises a hand in farewell before settling into a seat by the court by, by the counter. Oh, we have a lot of customers pouring in already. Sorry, Toma. I'll be here to help soon. No, no, I can handle this much just fine. I can't ask you to do that. You're already so busy every day. Oh, Signa. Good morning to you. How did you sleep? Uh, <laughs> I blinked and it was morning. Literally. You must have been so exhausted. Well, have you remembered anything yet? Unfortunately. Toma explains the situation. Oh, I see. But now please take it easy here at Stella's place. Something may trigger your memories. 
Oh, yes, I'm showing him around Stella's place for that exact reason. Then let me handle the customers. You take care of Signa, Toma. He mustn't feel... Uh, he mustn't feel like himself yet. Of course, leave it to me. Now then, let's move on to our next stop. The showers? <laughs> uh, as you can probably tell, these are the showers. It was built to be spacious so that many performers could shower at once. And surprise, there's no divider or anything, I'm just saying, and everyone's supposed to be here. <laughs> On the other hand, the bathtub is rather small. I hope that's okay. There's little, uh, there's little else to say about this place, so let's keep moving. Change appearance at the showers. The protagonists and demons can change their appearance in the showers. Kind of an odd place to do that, but okay. Select appearance from the showers menu to try out a new look anytime. This is the entryway. Basically, it's the entrance to Stella's place. There's actually a front door used by tavern customers, but there's actually a side entrance used exclusively by staff members. You may wonder, you may wonder why I, I would take you to such an ordinary place. Tomo lowers his voice again. There's actually a hidden staircase that leads into a secret basement. Quiz time. Where is the hidden staircase? <laughs> uh, under the cabinet. <laughs> Such impressive intuition. Wow, who would have guessed that a demon gazer could see this stuff too? <laughs> that was just a guess, really. Uh, the hidden staircase is over there, under that cabinet. One moment, please. I'll show you the way down. You descend a poorly lit stairwell. Only to end up in a well-lit hallway, much like those found upstairs. When the theater was open, they used uh, they used this small basement for storage. But the revolutionist party decided to make use of it for themselves. It was a plan spearheaded by the previous manager, before Muse. It's here we store our ultimate weapon in the fight against Magna the Magnastar. Right this way. Toma pushes the door open, revealing a room filled with foreign devices. What do you think? Are you surprised? A little bit. Everything in this facility was made to send out radio broadcasts. Radio? <laughs> Indeed. Radio! A radio is a device that uses magic to broadcast your voice remotely. Well, I mean, not necessarily magic, but I get your point. A box that can pick up those magic signals is required to hear it, but... With one, you can go anywhere and still hear whatever is said here. That is when you remember. The odd device making sounds by the Astral Furnace must have been a radio. We use the radio to spread the truth to all the people of Asteria. It's vital to the success of Muse's revolutionary efforts. After all, what point is a revolution without any support from the people? That's true. In truth, there's another purpose for the radio, but I can't say. And why not? Well, what's important now is getting more listeners to tune in to us. More listeners means more support for our cause. However, it hasn't been going quite as planned. Even when we spread the truth, most don't bother to hear us out. In fact, there are some who loathe us and call us traitors. Eh, not popular, huh? Prim singing is received well, so we should be gaining popularity. Toma operates the machine and shows you their current favor rating.
Okay, so 722 people, uh, I guess supporters. Max Star Gauge, that's gonna come into play later. <laughs> District Liberation Raids, Star Temple, Business, Garden, Royal Castle, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be something we're gonna get into later as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this game likes to dump a lot of information all your, uh, at you at once, but later explains it. The numbers indicate low favorability of the revolutionaries to listeners. It almost seems visibly perturbed by them. Is everyone content with letting Magnastar reign unchallenged? Aha! There he is! Oh, Castle! Were you looking for him? Yeah. I heard that he woke up. Thought I'd reintroduce myself. I'm Castle Glondike. I run the underground weapon shop. <laughs> yes, Castle. And in case if you haven't realized, this is the same castle from the first Demon Gaze. Yeah, granted, it has a different appearance, but same like before, he runs the weapon shop, so he's your weapons dealer. <laughs> it's just kind of strange why he's here compared to why he's over at the, the uh, Dragon Princess Inn. It's my job to supply the weapons and items necessary for the revolution. Well, it's a business, so I still charge reasonable prices for them. Uh, is your stuff good? Oh, shut up. <laughs> I provide great customer support. Be sure to stop by later, all right? We need to talk. Yes, yes. See you later. Our final stop is the manager's room. The manager's room is on the third floor, the same floor as your own room. Actually, I kind of find it strange that why is my room connected to Prim's and the manager's? Like, my, my, I'm, my room is the only room that is. Um, actually, maybe I stopped by the weapon shop, actually. Welcome. Nice, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> So, what do you think? Pretty nice shop, right? Most just call it a weapon shop, but I sell items here too. Our last store took some heat for being separate from the item shop. Yes, if I... Uh, yeah, that, there was kind of a feud going on between the weapon shop and the item shop in the first game, if I recall. <laughs> uh, I stock some gems for circles too. Buy some if you're ever running low. The gems? Huh? Oh, I guess you wouldn't remember. I'll explain all that later. Don't worry about it now. Oh, one other thing to keep in mind when it comes to your gear. Some items are called unique items. Only one of them exists in this world, so you will only ever obtain one. Well, it was common knowledge, but where I came from, but hey... <laughs> Honestly, I'm still pretty new here. I don't know if it's true in this place. In this place? Oh, uh, yeah, granted, we're in... I think we're in completely different... Countries? Territories? I don't know. <laughs> it's not the same city, I can tell you that. Uh, still unique items are invaluable. Don't get rid of them unnecessarily. <laughs> Actually, you probably shouldn't even bother selling them to begin with. Yeah, they only exist once in the entire game. And if for some reason you sell one to my shop, I'll let you get it back. Oh, that's good. Well, if you pay my buyback price, it won't come cheap. <laughs> Unique items are rare items that can only be obtained once. <laughs> Ugh. Take care when managing them. I also have a bargain bin, and I even run a lottery. Check them out when you can. Oh, and bring a ton of money. Bargains. Find affordable, high-quality gear in the bargain bin's rotating lineup. Lottery. Test your luck at the at the lottery first place prizes change daily. <laughs> All right, that covers everything for now. Thank you for the explanation. 
Now then, I have some other places to show you. Huh? That noise means... Oh, our no noisy neighbor must finally be awake. You should go and meet her since you're already here, Signa. In that case, allow me to handle the introductions. Alright, go for it. So, Excuse our me. noisy neighbor. That's Prometh, nice. Are you awake? <laughs> Prometh. Who is it? <laughs> Still half asleep, I see. Hmm. That bone structure. I think I recognize it. Oh. Well, well. If it isn't Toma and the Gazer. Good morning. G good morning? It's already quite late. Right. Well, whenever I wake up is morning to me. Oh, how inconsiderate of me. Allow me to introduce myself. She hands you a small piece of paper. It seems to be a business card. Dell's play staff Prometh, broadcast writer, key lyricist. Okay, so in the first game though, it's Prometh. Yeah, another yeah, another character from the first game ends up here. Uh, in the first game, though, Prometh was just a mortician living in the basement, which I guess that's not any different from here. Uh, yes, yeah, so she was just the mortician who had kind of managed dead souls in a way, and kind of a fancy way of saying that she could help bring back your dead party members if need be. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for a price, though. I mean, it wasn't going to be free. So, just take care not to die too often. <laughs> so it says... I am the broadcast writer, Prometh. It's good to meet you. Broadcast writer. Hmm. About that. If I had to summarize it. The unseen hand that controls all things related to the radio... ...is me. It is no exaggeration to claim that, without me, there is no radio show. The broadcast both begins and ends in time with my will. Forsooth, the true ruler of Stella's place is me. B pardon the interruption, but could you stay on point? In short, I am the one who decides what is said on the radio. <laughs> Sounds important. No, but it seemed important to make it sound more dramatic. Okay. I figured this would be a pain in the ass. Castle, I'm sorry about that. It's my fault for being so passive. Don't sweat it. She's too much for an amateur to handle. Anyway, Prometh, you're still on that other job, right? Hmm. What was it again? Mortician. You're a mortician. Unless you file for bankruptcy. <laughs> so, still a mortician. By heart, anyway. Oh no. That job is ongoing. Part-time. Yes, a part-time side job. Indeed. I assume you need my services as a part-time mortician? Yes. Please explain your services. In brief, please. Oh, what a shame. As you know, I am a full-time broadcast writer and a part-time mortician. Thus did Prometh describe her services as the mortician. In some ways, she performs the following. Revives those who have died, near death to be precise, near death. Okay, so they're not totally dead, they're just almost dead. <laughs> but this service comes with a non-negotiable fee. If you find yourself dead, come and ask for my services. But I'll be dead. 
quick, affordable, reliable. My revival services are all of these. Uh, that slogan makes it feel somewhat fishy. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Oof. I'm sorry, Castle. I ended up <laughs> bungling at this after all. Ah, don't worry about it. I've put up with her crap for years. Oops, I got sucked into her pace and nearly forgot to mention. There's extra storage space for you to use in Promise Room. If you're carrying too much, drop some of it off here. Item storage. Promise room contains a separate item storage area available for use. Uh, used to stow away unnecessary items. Man, Promise hasn't changed a bit. She's a bit more lively than before, but she's way more troublesome. Is that so? Actually, let's set that aside. We should focus on the task at hand. I agree. Sir, please don't forget to stop by the manager's room on the third floor. If you don't, I'll get scolded by Muse. Alright, take care. Alright, so... <laughs> That's some interesting stuff. Can I... Do I even have any stuff to buy or anything? I don't have any money. Okay. Doesn't help me one bit. <laughs> I'll guess I'll have to come back later. First floor. Hello, manager. I brought him. Oh, you're finally here. Feel free to let yourself in. Yes, excuse us. How's it going? Are you feeling any better? Uh... I'm fine. Yeah, you don't look as pale today. I'm glad. Still can't remember anything, but I'm fine. What about you, sis? Surely you must be tired too. No rest for the wicked, right? Magnastar's crimes continue even now. The reason I called you here is related to that, but... First, I want you to meet someone. Pegasus, come here. Coming! Hi, Pegasus. Standing before you now is the demon that you met the other night, Peg. What? <laughs> I'm happy to see my big brother again. Big brother? Oh, God. Please don't call me Oni-chan. Before. But I promise to protect you from now on, so you'll be fine. I'm really super duper strong. Uh, explanation, please. Th that's right. Who is this girl? The demon soul that you absorbed. We used that to create Pegasus here. We were surprised at first too, but according to Prometh. We can think of this girl here as a reincarnated demon. That's odd. <laughs> so we took her soul and reincarnated to the same form, but on our side, I guess? A demon captured by a demon gazer will abide by her captor's command. So in other words, Pegasus here is your ally. Yep! I love my big brother! Yep. Okay, a little bit cute here, but... Acquiring Liberty Skills. Select a Liberty Skill when an ally joins or at specific levels. Let's select the skill to acquire. Liberty Skills cannot be reacquired. Okay, so when I get a new character, I can choose... One of the skills, avoid, increase the evasion of a party member, multiple uses stack this effect. Flood Bolt, attack one enemy with a random element. Hmm. Well, I guess 
I'm gonna go with... Well, let's go with Flubbolt. Pegasus joined the party. <laughs> If you can employ demons like this, it would be a huge boon for us. <laughs> the tables have turned. Th that's all well and good, but did you need to talk about something else? Yes. I have to ask this of you. Join us as we change the future of this city together. With your power, I want you to shine as the light of Asteria's revolution. Uh, the sincerity in Musa's eyes pierces you deep in your heart. But first, we'll need to see that power of yours ourselves. Muse casts a sideways glance to Toma. How may I serve? Bring Castle here and tell him it's an emergency situation. Yes, right away. Huh? When did this become an emergency? not, but this way, I figured he'd run and get here fast. Well, why can't you just use a phone or something? Or an intercom? Jeez. You're unbelievable, sis. Come on, I sprinted all those way thinking there was an emergency. But a lesson about using demons? Yep, that's pretty much what we want. Pretty much. Don't give me that. Listen, Muse, didn't I tell you a million times? Yes, I may have fought alongside a certain demon gazer before, aka Oz from the first game, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm sick of hearing it. Then stop acting like I sat around talking about how I'm a demon gazer. <laughs> Not once in my life have I ever controlled a demon. I'm well aware of that. But if we count the number of people who here who know about demons well, Castle, only you and the broadcast writer know anything about demons. That's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> Unless you really think she, uh, she should be the one to teach him how to fight. No, but <laughs> you've seen a demon gazer first uh, fight firsthand, haven't you? Just sharing that experience would be helpful for Signa. <laughs> Yep, yep, what Prip said. <laughs> so no one here knows anything about demons. It's just going to rely on the somewhat information that Castle and Prometh has. <laughs> but you know what? I just kind of think... I mean, couldn't they have actually looked this up somewhere? <laughs> I mean, it's got to be some written text or something about the adventures that Oz had in his first game. I'm just saying. Uh, don't be so stubborn, Castle. <laughs> Not like we expect you to know every single thing. Damn it, fine. Don't blame me if this doesn't help. Fine, I won't. I know you're kind of I know you're the kind of man who would never leave a friend behind. <laughs> Let's do our best together. Uh, whatever. We'll do this your way. Sigma, it seems that demon really likes you. Well, I'll head back to the shop so I can prepare. Meet me at the entryway on the first floor when you're ready for your lesson. Uh... I'm worried. <laughs> I'm the one who's worried. We'll go over the details in a bit. See ya. Alright. Yes, Prim. <laughs> Castle talks like a real tough guy, but he's a nice man. Yeah, he's awesome. And e so easy to manipulate. <laughs> hey, Prim, did you bring that thing? Yes, the thing sent to us from the item shop, you mean? <laughs> uh, here we go, Signa. We just wanted you to have this. A mini radio. <laughs> Behold, the latest mini radio model. As long as you have it, you can hear our broadcasts from anywhere. Go ahead and meet up with Castle so you can learn how to handle demons. 
Please be careful, Sigma. I kind of find it strange that I'm getting lessons from Castle, who doesn't- he's not even a demon gazer, he just barely knows anything about that. But I guess they have no one left. <laughs> I mean, unlike the the first game where I was pretty much- where Oz was pretty much getting trained by an actual demon gazer. Yeah! Yo, you here, ready to head out? Sure, why not? Alright, let's go. We should go and check out a restricted zone right away. There's an entertainment district down the road called Ohm Street. I'll show you the way. We can talk more after we, we arrive. Ohm Street, yeah, right. To the city. Select uh, Sortier from the entryway to visit myriad areas within Astrea City. Enter restricted zones via one of the many entrances around the city. Oh, right. I almost left out an important detail. But the little girl that joined your party. <sighs> I'm not a little girl. I'm Peg. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I already know who you are. You definitely have to fight some monsters inside restricted zones. That's why you better think about your party's formation in advance. I think real line fighters can't attack unless using ranged or spear weapons. I really, really like the front line. So she says. Anyway, keep that in mind. I'll see you at Ohm Street. Party order. Okay, access the menu, select order to alter your formation. Adjust the formation to take advantage of each demon's attributes. Welp! Talking about formation here. We got Pegasus, Migmi, Paladin. Uh, let's see here. I think typically you should have... I don't really think there's any specific order as to what you can have here. Uh, I mean, like I said, you can have up to a party of five. And I think at least one of your teammates has to... If you have a party of five, at least one of your teammates has to be in the back line. <laughs> at least. Uh, that being said... That being said, though, I think it'd be better. <laughs> well, actually, I, I need to know what kind of equipment I even have. I don't know what I have. Short sword. All right. Uh, well, unfortunately, I can't really bother putting her in the back row since she has short range. <laughs> I just keep it in the front for now, I guess. Right. Ohm Street. <laughs> Welcome to Ohm Street, the busiest strip in Astria. In Asteria. <laughs> I'm not gonna get just that name. Uh, entertainment districts like this are kind of desolate during the day. Ah, that's not important right now. We're here for the restricted zone. If we take the alley in the back, we can reach 666th Avenue. <laughs> Love the name. Right over there. Don't get lost. Alright, the 666th Avenue has been added. Welcome to Demon's Alley. <laughs> Welcome to the Restricted Zone. This one's called 666th Avenue. It's the closest one to Stella's place. The off-limits regions scattered across Asteria City are Restricted Zones. Monsters roam free inside them. But to keep those monsters... Oh, 
paroled demons oversee each of the zones. Well, that's what we're told anyway. In other words, it's dangerous here. Last time you were in one of those zones, you got captured. Well, enough talk. Let's go. There are monsters wandering around, so be careful. You hear me? Oh boy. Oh no. Okay, so I can technically go back to the base if I want. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Well, you know, I gotta say, uh, at least for one thing, at least for one thing, is if you do ever need to go back to Stella's place, uh, luckily there's no rent to pay, <laughs> which that is a good advantage already, because I hated paying paying rent in the first Demon Gaze, because <laughs> you had to always make sure you had the, had enough cash to come back, otherwise you'll lose access to your furniture. Door is locked tight. Can't go that way. Sure, why not? Uh how do I fight? Huh? Uh let's see. Do you feel power surging within you? Uh not really. Or maybe your eye itches. An ominous voice in your head? Maybe? It's just pretty much saying cliche things. <laughs> uh no. Damn it. I knew this wouldn't work. How the hell am I supposed to know how to control demons? <laughs> Having trouble, are we? I could teach you how to use them. Your demon powers, I mean. Doesn't look like I have much of a choice. You again. This is no time to chat. Here comes the enemy. Something approaches. The best way to learn something is to actually try it out. Let's start with the most powerful technique of all. Pegasus may look like a human right now, but... As you know, this isn't her true form. She needs to demonize to unleash her full potential. Demonize allows demons to take on their true form. Demons will obey whatever their demon gazer tells them. So, go ahead, try to demonize Pegasus. Demonize, it's time to transform a demon. Choose demonize from the demon command list. All right. Yeah. So right off the bat, what is different compared to to the first game is that unlike the first game where you actually had your main character and you get you can make uh, teammates. Because uh, in the first game you, you can actually make your own teammates and have them join your own party, and you had the demons fighting alongside you, kind of acting as a temporary sixth ally, more or less. Uh, in this game, though, your allies are your demons. Uh, granted, in their human form, nonetheless, but they, again, you can demonize them, fully awakening their demonic powers. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. And again, kind of a little bit of downside, because I can't really make any other character except for the main character, but... You, well, you do get a lot more characters here compared to the first game, let's just say. <laughs> okay, ticks up two of the star gauge, star points, uh, transform demons and boost their stats. Star gauge will decrease each turn. Yeah. The demon transforms. <laughs> that was great. Well done, demon gazer. Once demonized, a demon will power up in all aspects. Always demonize if you run into a powerful opponent. That said, you you should be aware of one thing. To stay demonized, you need to use the Star Gauge. Think of Star Gauge as demon controlling magic. Demonization will end once the Star Gauge is depleted. If the Star Gauge is depleted, the demon will revert back to normal. The Star Gauge fills as you fight in battles. Oh, I almost forgot. While demonized, a special skill is available. Each demon has a unique command called a demon skill. Pegasus can use Iron Shell, which will boost defenses. Having a demon skill makes a huge difference. Just another reason to keep demonized in the back in mind all the time. 
Using demon skills, activate them from the demon command. While demonized, a demon skill can be chosen from the character's commands. Select the demon skill you want to use from the demon command list. Be aware that using a demon skill will consume some of the star gauge. That should do it. Well, good luck in battle. Repeat function. Use repeat when using the same actions. Press triangle to have the party repeat the previous turn's actions. <laughs> Which, more likely I'm going to be using that quite a bit. <laughs> However, demon skills and certain other skills cannot be repeated. Alright. And of course, yeah, you do have to log to let you know what each turn has. <laughs> it gives you a, a detailed description of what happened in each turn. I'm not exactly sure why you need that, but I guess in case the battle goes long, you're not sure what has happened. I don't know. <laughs> Iron Shell creates a wall that reduces physical damage for one turn. Technique. Support. Return the door. It can heal. It can defend if I want, but I'll just stick with this. Even creates a wall to reduce physical damage. Yeah, that, all those stats on the side over there kind of gives you a slight breakdown as to different defenses or different different abilities, stat boosts, and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I kind of wish they would actually label it, unfortunately, because I'm not sure exactly what some of those are <laughs> or I can't remember right now. But I guess in time it will come back to me. City Goblin died. Alright. The demonized effect has ended. Okay. No treasures. <laughs> a job well done. Although, I'd expect no less from a demon gazer. Okay, what's your game? I gave you that demon gaze, so I'd prefer it if you used it properly. What do you mean you gave me the demon gaze? Don't make me laugh. It's because of you bastards that he lost his memory, demon gaze aside. Let's all take it down a notch. I'm not here to start a fight. I mean, you guys do want to know how to use it, right? What did you say? <sighs> Don't misunderstand. Power will seek its own purpose. That said, you are unable to teach someone how to use this vital power. Without the ability to control demons, you have no means to protect yourself. Damn it. He has a point. So, what should we do? Ah. <sighs> Let's accept his help. Huh. You're a pretty good guy. I think I like you, Demon Gazer. Fine. Come with us if you want. But do anything funny, and you're dead. Alright, that works for me. Well, it may be a brief collaboration, but let's get along, Demon Gazer. Signa, do you see the circle? Approach that first, then we'll talk. Begin quest, a mysterious boy's task. Changing <laughs> difficulty. Game difficulty can be changed freely. If enemies are too easy or hard, adjust the difficulty as desired. When in Promus... I don't want to give me this explanation now. <laughs> when in Promus room, ask Promus to change the difficulty any time. In <laughs> incinerated. The difficulties are lukewarm, warm, hot, burned, in order of increasing difficulty. I didn't change the names, because it used to have been cold, cool, warm, and hot, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so it's just raising in temperatures here. But there is another level above that called incinerated. Please give it a try if you're confident in your ability. Which I am not. <laughs> 
Honestly, I think I stuck to the default difficulty, which is actually... I think it was just warm, actually. <laughs> this is technically... Yeah, I think I'm playing at warm difficulty, which is kind of the same as cool difficulty from the first game. <laughs> but, I mean, the difficulty is gonna be more of an issue later. Actually, I'm kind of more questioning, why did he give me that explanation now? Why didn't he give me it <laughs> while I was at Promise? Random battle. Unfortunately, the star gauge does not, uh, you know, regenerates immediately. You have to keep fighting. I might as well get into battles, start leveling up my characters, I guess. Alright, we made it. We call this a circle. It's mainly considered a demon's territory. Control them all and the demon can no longer hide. Then, in a restricted zone, a demon circle will appear. It grants entry to their lair. So, do you understand? Uh... <laughs> Not at all. Huh, that's odd. I thought it was clear. Try being more detailed. Alright, to put it simply, step in the gem Step in a circle and then use a gem. Demons will appear lured by the gem used. Defeat them in order to control the circle. That's about it. Give it a try. <laughs> ah, that was great. Such a concise lecture. <laughs> You're just awful at it. Oh, it was accurate. Sing is believing, so here, give it a try. Receive several gems. Katana gem. Some of those that drop katanas, a common gem. Okay. Chill gem. Helm gem. Undies gem. Yeah, so we got a lot when it comes to gems, which... You're basically using the gems to activate the circle, but, you know, the types of gems you use kind of can give you the certain items that you might might want. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, place a gem on them to summon treasure bearing enemies. Uh, circles can be uncontrolled, controlled, or summoned. Circles that you receive treasures from are called summoned. They revert to controlled upon returning to Stella's place. You can change formation at controlled and summoned circles. Regular gems. Silver colored gems are called regular gems. Uh, determine the type of treasure you get. Uh, you will need to place one or more regular gems to summon a circle. Sacred gems are not affected by strength strengthening gems. Special gems or gold colored ones. Uh, special gems must be used in conjunction with regular gems. It's like a, a lot of gem types. <laughs> Got bronze gems, silver gems, gold, increased gem one, increased gem two, strengthened gem. Oh man. The obtained item will change based on enemy level. Okay. So I think. I'll do a katana, shield, undies. You don't have to actually do all three. You can just do just one if you want, but it needs to at least be. It just needs to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just needs to at least have one gem to order to activate the circle. Something approaches. Okay. A Mopibara. <laughs> Got some strange monsters here. Long katana, chains, undies, leather buckler. Okay. Let's 
Signal leveled up. Oh. All right, finally got to level two. Okay, can increase my strength. It represents physical strength. This value affects attack power. Okay, intuition, intellect, represents mental intellect. This value affects attack magic power. Mystic, affects healing power. Uh, vitality affects defense and max HP. Agility affects hit rate, evasion, and turn order. Luck and resilience affects probability-based situations. Let's go with... We want for strength. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another thing is, you don't have to actually use the use the point immediately. You can actually save up on them if you want. You don't have to. Okay. Of course, even just leveling up increases my HP too a little bit. Uh, HP by thirteen. MP by three. Pegasus leveled up. <laughs> Let's go for... Let's try a Vitality, I guess. HP by 17, MP by 3. Gain control of Libra Circle, 5 more until complete control. Congratulations, you now control the circle. Oh, almost forgot. The type of gem used in the circle affects the type of gear you receive. Sword gems for swords, etc. They should speak for themselves. A while back, there were a ton of bounty hunters after this stuff. <laughs> Some people can be so carefree, can't they? Well, be sure to use the gems wisely if you intend to lead a revolution. What are you trying to pull? I am merely stating facts. Didn't I tell you? That power must be used properly. It's about time to wrap this up. There's one more circle nearby, so go and gain control of it. You should be able to handle things without me butting in. However, I'll chime in if anything noteworthy occurs on our way. <laughs> okay. And then, let's start exploring. Alright. Alright, so the circle has been summoned, and it's gonna stay away until I clear out this air. Well, unless I go back to Stella's place. Ugh. Oh, I got confused. Actually, thinking about it, I should probably... Whip. I did get Chain Undies, so... It will... Lower my accuracy a little bit, but at the same time... Give me a little bit more defense. Should be good for now, maybe. Oh, actually, I still need to also heal, so I should probably do that too. Get level twelve and get a health heal. Cure a party member's status ailments does not revive dead units. Darn. What? Huh? A dead end? Hey. Hey, what's going on? 
Oh, that's right. I've forgotten such things existed. For a moment, I thought we had gotten lost again. Take a good look at the wall in front of you. There was a pink light. Ah, so you'd noticed. This wall is obscuring a hidden door. Trying giving suspicious walls like this one a good kick. If a, door, if a hidden door is being obscured, that should make it visible. What a pain. There's gotta be a quicker way. Some demons have certain skills that come in handy during explorations. As luck would have it, Pegasus here has a skill that locates hidden doors. <laughs> <laughs> yep, leave it to me. Choose the demon best suited to the location that you're exploring. It's yet another part of your job as a demon gazer. <sighs> Don't act cocky when your Magna Star is lackey. <laughs> well, you heard the man. Give that wall a kick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, try it. Hidden doors. Press the X to kick walls. It may reveal a hidden path. With Pegasus in your party, a pulsing pink star will uh, denote hidden doors. Party formation. You can alter your party formation while standing in controlled circles. This will prove useful when a specific demon is desired mid-exploration. Yeah, that could be po could be true. <laughs> could be well needed, I guess. Um. I think I'm trying to think where. Okay, so it's in the demon skills. You got you got skills marked with A's and P's. A P would be considered a passive skill that's always active no matter what. Uh, and then of course you got A's, which stands for active skill, which is skills that you have to activate in battle. <laughs> Something more approaches. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to be using the repeat function a lot. <laughs> Just to kind of speed things up. And really, typically, most times the repeat function is good enough for... You know, just normal attacking is usually just good enough in most situations. Lion Loot Map 2. Their class, Charnel House Treasure Map, loots, loot maps add an icon to the map without taking up item back space. Which... I guess that's a good thing? Actually, you know what? I think that is a better thing because if I remember, I, I think the loot maps that they had in the first... I think there were loot maps in the first game, but I think they actually took up your inventory space as well. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they took up actual inventory space for loot maps. At least here, this seems to be separate, so that's a good thing. Okay, well... I'll go with... I'll go with a helm, I guess. I think I can still technically use touchpad capabilities. I mean, I am using uh, PlayStation TV. <laughs> Leather helmet. Gain control Libra Circle. Four more until complete control. Yes, very well done. Looks like you will fulfill your role as a demon gazer nicely. That's all I can teach you. Oh. Although, not like I know your intentions, but... 
If you control all the circles in an area, a demon circle will appear. By entering it, you can take care of the demon in charge of that area. So if you want to subjugate a demon, you'll need to control the circles first. I don't know your end game, but you did help us out today. As much as I hate to admit it, that's quite alright. I have my reasons for doing so. So, uh, how about it, Signa? You understand how to handle demons for the most part now, right? <laughs> uh, I sure do. Alright, that's good to hear. I think we should head back for today, though. By the way, are you... Huh? Like I slinked off, huh? <laughs> Weird. Till the very end, that guy. I guess a little bit of training. <laughs> we made it back. <laughs> it's comforting to get back home after all that work and not having to pay rent. <laughs> uh, be sure to return here if you ever get into trouble, okay? Nothing good will come from overdoing things. Auto healing in Stella's place. HP, MP, and adverse effects other than death recover at Stella's place. Other than death, huh? <laughs> okay. Jeez, I didn't expect to run into that guy again. I wonder what his motive was in approaching us. Well, we weren't getting anywhere with my lessons anyway, so I guess he did help us out. Alright, first things first, we should check in with the manager. Oh, if you're looking for her, she's at the tavern instead of the manager's room right now. Huh? Why is that? She's been waiting there for you two for quite a while now. She said she couldn't handle just sitting in her room waiting. That sure sounds like her. Alright, Signa, let's go to the tavern. Alright, I think... <laughs> I think for that I'm gonna probably call it right about here. I'm a little over an hour of my recording time. <laughs> I think if anything else, it's probably gonna be roughly an hour-long recording sessions like I did before. <laughs> Granted, I have no idea how many parts this game is going to take for me to finish. I'm, I'm going to take a huge guess and say close to about 40. <laughs> That's just a guess at that point. Because this game is a lot longer than the first, so let's just say that. But... At least we're kind of getting the basics out of the way. I mean, it's going to start out slow at first, but... <laughs> I can quickly dive into this once I get through most of this tutorial stuff. Uh, but it looks like I'm almost done with it, though, so maybe one more part that should cover it. <laughs> Alright guys, this is Delphontrexyz, and until next time.